So, Mr. Adrian, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And first, we'd like to know uh, about the GBBs and CPVC projects you have. Tell us more about what you do in these two projects. The, the, the two uh, main brands we have, if you like, are um, for two to six year olds mm -hmm. and six to 12 year olds. And for the two to sixes, it's CBBs, mm -hmm. um, www.bbc.co.uk slash CBBs. Okay. And that's where we have programs for younger children. It's a very safe environment where they um, can be entertained, uh, and it has a slight, uh, uh, an informal learning approach mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. It's a very successful um, channel uh, which has website, uh, television and radio programs. Mm -hmm. And for older children, 6 to 12 year olds, we have CBBC, mm -hmm. um, which is www.bbc.co.uk slash CBBC. Okay. And that's for older children. It's a mixed genre channel, again, with website and television. Mm -hmm. um, and it has animation, mm -hmm. comedies, entertainment, factual programs, mm -hmm. news, very broad range of programs for older children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in your speech, you discussed the Me and My uh, movie project. Tell us in detail what this project is all about and your experience with it, how, how you saw children dealing with this, uh, with this project. Your, yeah. So tell us more in detail about it. Well, me and my movie, it, me and my movies, is a is a partnership between BBC Children's, BBC Learning, and BAFTA, which is the British Academy mm -hmm. for Film and Television Arts, okay. and it is a, a project that really in, um, builds on children's desire to create content. They love making movies on their mobile phones or on video cameras if they have them, um, and it really provides them with the tools to create content, to show them how to do it, and then it gives them a forum to share that content with other people. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, as part of a contest, if uh, as it go, as a, you know, tens of thousands of applications are screened by a lot mm -hmm. of people, I myself screened some mm -hmm. this year, about 40, I think, then, then they range from 30 seconds through to, uh, I think, two minutes, three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the winners, will get a special award at, at BAFTA, mm -hmm. so it has a lot of um, mm -hmm. credibility with it. Yeah. And of course you get some, which are just children, you know, putting a mobile phone in mm -hmm. front of their friends and doing something daft. Yeah. But at the other extreme, you get fantastically complex, really um, innovative and creative storytelling from mm -hmm. children, and they think about the soundtrack, they think about mm -hmm. story structure, they think about graphics. Some of them uh, make uh, stop frame animations using mm -hmm. plasticine. It's really a, a, it's a, it is, and it's a tribute to the tremendous creativity of children. Mm -hmm. We get very, children, I don't know what it's like in the Middle East, but children get a bad press very often yeah. and they're, you know, they're walking around shopping malls with their hoods up and they're not great but in yeah. fact the majority of children have a lot to say and a lot mm. to give us mm -hmm. a lot to offer mm. and they have tremendous stories they want to share with us mm. and that's a, it's a, uh, me and my movies is a good avenue for that. Mm -hmm. Okay so since you have dealt with projects by which or in which children express <coughs> their talents mm -hmm. what do you think are the social and um, personality impact of this on the children? Mm -hmm. I think that there are tremendous um, positive impacts on children mm -hmm. and some that we perhaps need to monitor. Okay. Uh, and we've talked about it a bit in the conference this morning. Mm -hmm. I think children are creative uh, and I don't think it takes much for that creativity to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And when they know how to use the digital tools that are available, they can do great things. Mm -hmm. We also have stories of kids who just sit hunched over computers day mm -hmm. after you know, hour after hour. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to teach them how to manage that so that they don't just focus all their attentions and all their social skills mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. They need to get out and play. They need to go and communicate with their friends and families as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that's about managing the technology rather than letting the technology manage us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you think parents' close supervision or being protective on, on the children when, when, we, when we speak about their online behavior? So how do you think parents should go with this? Should they be closely supervising, supervising their kids and will this like, kill the creativity that the children can have or how could they manage this? So. I, I don't think there's one right answer to that. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's a question of the parents' comfort level and the children's mm -hmm. comfort level. I know that I would not do very well if my mother was sitting on my shoulder mm -hmm. all the time while I was trying to create a movie, yeah. especially if I was trying to be a little bit naughty and children have a great sense of humour. Yeah. But at the same time, I think often parents can help children with their creativity. They can encourage them and challenge them to go a bit further. Mm. Um, so, I, I, as ever, it's a, it's a judgment call. I think mm. it's a question of 
I think parents can, can support their children and monitor their children without necessarily being there and peering over mm -hmm. sc their screen the entire time. Mm -hmm. And of course it depends on the age. Younger children would be much more open mm -hmm. to parents sitting yeah. with them as they're creating something. CBeebies mm -hmm. has a very interactive website and that, um, even though children um, uh, at a very early age can navigate that site on their own and play and manipulate a lot of the, the content, very often they're sitting with their parents, their carers or their grandparents. Mm -hmm. Older children, you know, the older children don't want their parents yeah. sitting behind them. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, as ever, it's a negotiation between parent and child. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually we call children digital natives because they're so comfortable with the technology. But does this mean that they are literate? Can we equate both terms? I think that um, being a digital native doesn't necessarily mean that you are fully digitally literate. Mm. And again, there are different kinds of literacy. You might, be, you might be literate to the extent that you know how the technology works, mm -hmm. but are you literate to the extent that you fully understand the consequences of your actions? If you mm -hmm. go there and make that comment, something else will happen down the road. So mm -hmm. I think I wouldn't make the assumption that they mean the same thing. Mm. Uh, and I think that even though children can jump on a technology uh, like locusts and, mm -hmm. and, and gorge on it, mm -hmm. I think we still need as educators and as parents to make sure they fully understand how to use it mm -hmm. effectively, safely and, and uh, creatively. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you think can we encourage digitally literate kids to express their talents and their views online but without endangering their safety? How can we do this? I think, uh, it's a, uh, I think we can do that through a combination of um, creating safe environments for them to mm. do that, that are monitored, that have all sorts of mechanisms which allow them to interact with others in a safe way. Mm. But primarily the most important way is to teach them the skills they need mm. uh, in order to make those informed judgments. Mm -hmm. Because very often it's, uh, it's about what they post, where they post. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody at the conference, I've forgotten who, I'm sorry, was just telling me that they have um, today is think before you post day. And so really just getting children to think before they push that send yeah. button is a really simple um, but quite pragmatic tactic that they mm -hmm. can use to, to um, explore the consequences of their actions. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately we have to teach children to make their own decisions, to make their own smart decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my final question would be how can online platforms and websites teach children, but without falling into the trap of having a very dry, instructive message that children would be see, would see very direct. So how can we educate children without falling into this trap? Uh, well, actually, I'm, I have dual citizenship. I'm both British and Canadian. Okay. And the great Canadian philosopher, mm -hmm. um, Marshall McLuhan, said mm -hmm. that anyone who asks the difference between education and entertainment knows mm -hmm. nothing about either. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we have to be very smart in how we communicate with children mm -hmm. so that we can give them all sorts of examples and all sorts of opportunities mm -hmm. without being too didact didactic. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's a difference with age range. With young children, you can be quite didactic. Do do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you know very well if you tell a child not to do something, they're going to go and do it. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be much smarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I still think we should, we should listen to children because when children are aware mm. of what they should do or shouldn't do, they're quite, they, they clearly understand why. Mm. And I think it might be useful to, to um, get some children to teach other children mm -hmm. what they should or shouldn't do. A lot, of, a lot of adults tell children what to do and yeah. not do. We could actually use some of the children mm. to teach the children themselves too. Okay. Thank you for this lovely interview and thank you so much for joining us in this conference. You're welcome. Thank, thank, you, thank you, so you very much. much. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Thank you.